Again, this is chapter five. The team of misfits. Let's begin. Let's look directly at the people leading that attack on Scientology and who have just dedicated their lives to denouncing everything it contributes to the world. Who really are these people doing this? Well, there's a long list of wannabe attention grabbers, but we will attempt to list out all of the main culprits, and perhaps you'll recognize some of them. For the full list, you should visit Scientology's Watchdog website, where they also expose the crimes of the apostates, at stingandeleague.org. I won't be listing off. Um, I won't be reading that chapter, I mean that, that title of um, the list, and then I won't be reading the list of corporations. I will, have, I will have you read that, and you take a look at the truth there. All right? So we're skipping the lists. This is the next chapter after that. The simple truth is these corporations, public figures, and other people paid by those who want to make a profit from bashing Scientology are all working pretty openly together. Most people don't have time to confirm or research what they hear, so they fail to see this simple arrangement of apostates creating controversy so they can get paid and help their employers, quote-unquote, benefit from the exposure and ratings. Hmm, interesting. The fact stands that these people have already been exposed. These corporations have been exposed for things done in the past, and they are using Scientology as another example of corruption and bigotry. Again, most people are too busy working and raising families and looking out for people to take the time and research the time and research scandals, crimes, and unethical behavior of these important quote unquote people. Of these quote unquote important people, right? And and quote unquote successful media organizations. But with the current movements to expose corruption, drain swamps, and promote equal rights. Under the law, you can see occasional headlines or formerly quote unquote big fish are getting caught and pushed out of their abusive positions. The church cleared out all of these people. They expelled them. They didn't leave. They were expelled for their crimes and violations. Once exposed, you see the families of the people who have committed crimes and violations against Scientology no longer want any association with them. No matter what they state in regards to Scientology being the cause of these family disassociations, that is just not the case. These individuals have committed crimes and violations against their family's standards of decent and responsible behavior. And not only that, but they fail to see the importance of taking responsibility for these wrongdoings. This doesn't mean taking responsibility, making things right by way of the church's scriptures and policies, but legally as well. Some of these individuals stole money, property, and knowingly lost the church millions of parishioner donations. That's criminal. These individuals would rather continue to bash the religion they once stood for, and by doing, thing, by doing this, they pull others down with them so they may never see the truth about Scientology. Sadly, there really isn't much to do for these individuals in terms of showing them the truth, as they've, taught, as they've been taught to not see it. They have been, in other words, brainwashed. Huh, interesting. Somehow, the thing that they've been trying to project onto the church is actually happening with others. Hmm, interesting. I'm very informed about these individuals. I have spoken to their family members. I have watched their interviews. I have read the transcripts. I have seen the affidavits. And I have even seen the court hearings against one another. That is all I need to make a decision. I have seen both sides of information. And I don't think I could ever just, quote, unquote, ignore it. Why did you need to know this? Well, because in order to make an informed decision on something, you have to be willing to understand the unknown and especially confront it. If something sounds too good to be true, it probably isn't true. And by that rule, if you hear something is too horrible to exist, then that probably isn't really as bad as that is either. 
the first step is looking at it for yourself and honestly seeing if it's making things better for people. Mr. Hubbard has a favorite saying that what is true for you is what you have observed yourself to be true. Interesting. So what I'm seeing in this chapter, chapter five, just wanted to touch on it a few minutes here, uh, well, a few seconds, really is that there are a team of um, people against the religion. Well, against many religions, actually, not just Scientology. But um, they don't really have a job that's um, respectable or credible. They'd rather attack a religion and religions for money. Um, personally, as the same person, I can't see that being something that I would want to do. So um, definitely go ahead and read Chapter 5. Um, get your copy at ExposingCrimes.com. Um, get that list of people and do what you wish. Basically, I, I mean, what I would say is don't even listen to them. But um, that's just me. All righty, guys. Thanks so much. See you in Chapter 6.